First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, or Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth, sincerity, and wholeheartedly. And Shalom to the Akwaf, which is the women believers. Shalom to you, Yahweh being the Father's true name in the Hebrew, Yahweh Shai being his son's name in the Hebrew. The real name, the only name that you can call on to be saved. And um, I want to talk about this hidden treasure that we have. You know, as we um, head closer to, you know, Jacob's trouble and lawless society and all the things that we have to go through to receive the goal, the kingdom. You know, this truth that we have, don't take it lightly. Do not take it lightly because we have something that cannot be taken away from us. The only, the only, well, the only being, because, you know, our father is a, is a father of spirits. Um, But the only power that could take this away from us is Yahweh himself and through his son, Yahweh Shai. So. So this is something that you take seriously every day, something that you pray for to retain. And, you know, as we get closer, just it's time to lock in even more. I'm pretty sure, you know, um, the ones that's been in the truth for a long time and even some who just been in the truth for a little bit. You know, I'm pretty sure that you already is locked in, but don't ever get too comfortable. But anyway, say again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field that which when a man have found it, he hideth it. And for joy thereof, go up and selleth all that he have and buy up that field. So, you know, when you get this truth, when you first get it, go tell your family and friends. Nine times out of ten, they're going to reject you. The scripture said that a prophet is not without honor, except for his own country. So, most of, well, some of us, I know I'm one of them, have forsaken lands and family, children, all that, you know, to give my life unto the Lord. Some, some, um, circumstances was, was out of my control. You know, I love to be, you know, you know, around them, but the Lord had something in store for me. They, they left me and Hey, it is what it is. So, but, um, but the point is, is that, so when you get this truth, cause it said that he hideth and it's not that you, you know, conceal the truth because you're making your body a living sacrifice. When you go out there, you know, everybody see you when you put your video on YouTube, everybody can see you. So it ain't talking about you get this truth and you hoard up the wisdom that you have. It's talking about when you go out into the world, you don't have to broadcast, hey, I'm an Israelite and I'm in the truth. Hey, yo, and you, you, you Israelite too, you know? But when you was, when you was early in it, most of us had that, you know, that zealous spirit, the over over zealous spirit, put it that way. You know, but we we conceal this in our spirit. We take this wherever we go. The scripture said not let not your um left hand know what your right hand do, or vice versa. You know, um uh, but yeah, so and it said we go and sell it, right? So somebody would be like, wait a minute, you ain't supposed to the truth is free. See, that's why you got to know words. You got to know context. Proverbs 23 and 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. So the, the scripture I just read said go sell of it. So what is it talking about when it says. And sell of all that he have. I mean, he buying into this truth. He's buying into this truth. He don't give a damn about what's in this world. 
He knows that this world cannot offer him anything that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai can give him. Hey, look at it this way. I mean, if, if, if you if you just stick to the precept upon precept, you stick to prophecy, you stick to the word. Esau got his blessing. We are in his blessing, not your blessing. Not in Jacob's blessing, we in Esau's blessing. And you want a piece of that. You can't serve the most high in mammon. Mammon go into a deity, deity that deals with riches, deals with money. So in this kingdom, you know, this man, he ended up getting a grip of the world, which the Lord prophesied, because that's his blessing. He ruled it by the sword. That's his blessing. And he, he was able to dupe the world by turning paper into money. And guess what? That's the same thing that our people go and fight for. Some money that's not even money. So, but the Lord gave him the power that he could he could call toilet paper money. And guess what? If you say that uh, the dollar is done away with toilet paper is now money. Guess what? That's the new currency. So that's the kind, that's the kind of power that he got. But it's an illusion. Just like this whole world that we are in is an illusion because it's temporary and it's going to be destroyed. I'm going to read it again and I'm going to get another precept. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man have found, he hideth and for joy thereof, go up and sell all that he have and buy that field. So now. We'll start for 27. Mark 10 and 27. Yahweh Shah looking upon him said, With men it is impossible, but not with the Most High, for with the Most High all things are possible. So you have to really believe that. Because, like, you know, going into all this trouble that we have to go through, if you don't have this type of faith that with the Most High it's nothing impossible. Then guess what? You're going to succumb to Esau's bullshit. Like when the economy crashed, when the famine happened, he's going to have some type of solution for you, which is going to cause the detriment of your spirit and your well-being in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's what's going to happen if you don't have this type of faith. So don't put and and that's another thing that our people do. They put the Lord in a box. Don't put the Lord in a box. Like even with, look, look, Esau is the base man, the worst of the heathen. And look, look at the, through Satan, of course, look at the technology that he have. The shit is awesome. I ain't going to sit up here in front. But it's artificial. <laughs> so imagine what the real thing going to be. That's something that our hearts haven't even perceived. But we just, you know, we could think about it. We could be like, oh, the kingdom of heaven is going to be like this. But you really don't know. It's going to be beautiful. All right. So anyway, I say, then Peter began and said unto him, lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Yahweh Shai, matter of fact, yeah, let, let, then Peter began to say unto him, lo, we have left all and followed thee. That's what it means that, you know, we buy and sell of all that we have and follow him, man. We forsake everything. You know, people have women that they love and children that they love. Not saying that you still don't love them, but they're not your priority no more. This is your priority. The Lord going to work it out. Remember that the Lord is in control. He's in control. So, because scripture said that in Ecclesiasticus 11 and 14, he said, prosperity, adversity, riches and poverty, life and death cometh of the Lord. So he controls all facets of life. So if you a man that, you know, the Lord blessed to be a man, a provider, you know, a family man, and on, and on top of that being in the truth, then hey, the Lord, that, that's your lot. It's some men who lost their family in this thing. It is what it is. But guess what? 
you continue to pray for them and hopefully the Lord have mercy upon them. And if he don't, you're going to see him again in the kingdom. So, hey, it's a win-win. The elect already won. We just got to ride through the wave. And it's going to be a bumpy one. So anyway, it said, and Yahweh shall answer and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the gospels. So this, this hey, somebody had to fulfill this scripture. The reason I love this scripture, because I fulfill it. You know. Like I told you, I always get personal with my videos because guess what? I have nothing to hide. And on top of that, it could be edifying to the next person that, you know, you could be going through the same thing. First Peter 5 and 9 said that we all, you know, the same prompts that you have is accomplishing your brethren. So we all go through things in the world. And guess what? If it's something written, it's going to be a, a, a opposite reaction to it. And it's going to actually happen. So you read the scripture, somebody got to fulfill it. And then it's going to be somebody the opposite of this. It might be people who actually still have their wife and their kids, but they still in the truth. So it don't make you more of a man of the Lord or less than a man of the Lord, whatever your situation may be. So it said, but he shall receive a hundredfold. So everything that you lose, going back to the first scripture with the most high, all things are possible. So you're looking at it like, damn, I lost my girl. I lost my kids. I lost my lifestyle. Fuck all that. The Lord said, but he shall receive a hundredfold. We don't even know what that really entitled. It sounds good, though. We don't know what a hundredfold is on the real for real. But you better believe it. Hey, the book of Job is a perfect example. He lost everything and then he got it back at the end of that chapter. Chapter 42, man. Matter of fact, let's get there real quick. Uh, Maybe it's 10. I haven't read it in a while. It said, and Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, turned the captivity of Job. What, what was the captivity of Job? The same shit that we go through. That's why Job, in the bigger sense, is Israel as a whole. You know, Satan really did a number on him. He lost everything. Everything that he had, he lost. Children, wife, all that. Then he had boils all over his body, man. Hey, man. Man, that's all I got to say. When he prayed for his friends, also, Yahweh Basham Abishai gave Job twice as much as he had before. So he lost everything. The Lord gave it twice as much. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that they had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him. You know, this scripture right here, you, you could take this so many ways. So the Lord... He he restored to him double, right? What he had. And then when you read this scripture, it talks about how, you know, all the ones that was with him. Could you like you can this scripture right here could be tied into the kingdom. Check me out through the Rakakwadash, Holy Spirit. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that they had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. So that's your family. That's the family that you lose, man. So guess what? Everything that you lose on this side in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have them back. They're going to eat in your house. You, and, and, look, and they bemoan him and comfort him all over the evil that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh brought upon him. Now, when you go to Revelation, I'm going to come back to this because this is the end goal. This is what I look forward to. A lot of tears are dropping still to this day. So it's saying the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there should be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither there should be any more pain for the former things are passed away. That That's what we're looking forward to. All right. So it says. And they bemoan him and comfort him all over the evil that Yahweh Bashem have brought upon him. So look, it said the evil that Yahweh Baha Shemi Hawashah brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. I'm going to leave it right there because I actually want to do a lesson on this, just with this scripture alone. I don't want to, you know, go into, you know, it too much. But just to show you, but let's read 30 again. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world come eternal life. 
but many that are first shall be last and the last first. So we at the bottom now. The Lord says it's an easy thing to turn a um, matter of fact. Let me let me end it on that. Let me end it on that. Oops. It say, marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. For it is the easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. And guess what? As Paul said, in a twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. So continue to do what you do. Pray to endure to the end. We almost out of here. Shalom.